There was the body of a young white female, estimated to be in the 20s, uh, laying at the foot of that culvert right there, below the guardrail. You will see a trail through the grass where the body was dragged across the guardrail, through the grass, and then apparently dropped over the culvert. There are blood stains there. There was a small amount of blood at the scene. Do you have any idea who did this? No, sir, we don't. Uh, at this time, we've not even identified the victim. Uh, she was completely stripped, and her, all of her clothing was missing, with the exception of the socks, of course. And we probably checked as many as 200 missing person reports from across the United States and Canada. Surely there's got to be somebody that, that cared for this girl and what happened to her. Lucas is said to have a very good memory and has been recounting his grizzly tours east, west, north, and south around the United States. He was a frequent traveler of I-35 through Central Texas, and that led Williamson County Sheriff Jim Boutwell to go to Montag yesterday. Emerging from a one-and-a-half-hour interview with the suspect this morning, Boutwell said Lucas cleared an unsolved 1979 murder from his books. It's the case of an as-yet unidentified 20 to 25-year-old woman found dead, nude except for orange socks and a ring, in a culvert across I-35 about five miles north of Georgetown at the Wahlberg exit. I'm convinced that uh, uh, based on information that only he would know, and uh, us and the medical examiner, that that case is cleared. Over the strenuous objections of his lawyers, Henry Lucas' videotaped and audiotaped confessions were played in open court today. The jurors were glued to the TV set as Sheriff Jim Boutwell took the stand to explain the circumstances of the statements, and then the courtroom lights were dimmed and they rolled the tape. In spite of repeated warnings on the tape from his lawyer, Lucas kept on talking, saying, it's the only way I can get peace of mind. If they kill me, I can't do anything about that. To me, a death penalty for something I've done is right, Lucas said. Then with very little prompting by Sheriff Jim Boutwell, Lucas detailed how the woman he knew only as Joni or Julie came to die in 1979 on Halloween. How he picked her up near Oklahoma City, had sex with her, drove around, ate dinner, and then headed south toward Texas on I-35. Not satisfied by the first sexual experience, he asked her to have sex again. She told me, not right now. She wanted to jump out of the car, and I pulled her back in. We drove a little farther, and I nearly lost control of the car. She was fighting so hard. I pulled over to the side of the road. I grabbed her by the neck, and I choked her until she died. I had sex with her again. has been identified as a Miss Deborah Jackson. Deborah Jackson was a 23-year-old age white female of Abilene, Texas, who left home roughly in 1977. She was not reported missing by the family as she had left home in the past, and it was believed that she had just had not returned home. Therefore, she was not entered into any databases for us to locate. June 2019, new forensic sketches released on all identified Williamson County cold cases to include orange socks. June 2019, cold case detectives received a phone call from a potential relative of orange socks. The relative says she saw the new forensic image of orange socks on the news and believes that orange socks may be her missing sister identified as Deborah Jackson.
months. Missy Kosky and Lori Hazenfluke didn't know if they'd ever make this trip. We had a, a big task in front of us. Facing the headstone of an unidentified woman and finally knowing who she is. You're one of the first people to stand at this John or Jane Doe's grave and know their real name. Kosky and Hazenfluke volunteer for the DNA Doe Project. We were able to analyze that and find patterns and find most recent common ancestors by doing traditional genealogy, which is almost like a reverse engineering of a family tree. They are two of the 50 volunteers across the country who, over the years, worked the Orange Sox cold case. It took a while for all the, you know, to get good DNA that was usable that we could submit for analysis. And the break in the case that helped them? Really, it was this, the picture in this instance. The final closure, you know, was the DNA. That, that we were able to confirm. And helped Koski, Hazenfluke, and many others feel closure. Today, we can look at it and say, this is Deborah. No longer an unidentified woman, the headstone, a reminder of this long journey.